All right, guys, well, we're in the Empire of Dirt here, which is my garage, and this is the current project. I'm not sure if many of you know, but uh, my wife's 98S10 had a 2.2 liter and a five-speed manual in it, and the 2.2 kicked the head gasket. And um, instead of replacing it with another 2.2, I decided to tear the whole thing apart and give it a little more power and um, a little more reliability. So currently, um, we have a 05 6 liter in here um, with a quote unquote sloppy stage one Elgin uh, grind, which uh, should wake it up a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to do much else with the truck, honestly. Uh, it's going to be stock PCM. I'm trying to use as much readily available parts as I can, like cheap junkyard parts. So, um, you know, I don't have a ton of performance stuff that I want to do to this. I just kind of want to make it off the shelf um, accessible. Don't have a whole bunch of money invested into it. Uh, other than the engine and the trans. The trans is a 4L60 out of a junkyard, so that's probably uh, on borrowed time, so as it is, but nonetheless, um, we've gotten to the point where the engine and the transmission are in the truck, and the engine is where I want it with the mounts. The transmission is in bolted into the transmission cross member, and my drive shaft is roughly an inch and a half too long. So, with that being said, we are going to shorten this drive shaft. Um, now, this isn't something that I've done before, but I have some friends that have done similar things with somewhat of a successful rate. Um, not going to get too crazy with it. The This shaft currently is 53 inches long, and it needs to be roughly 51 and a half inches long. So with that being said, we are going to lop uh, an inch and a half out of it. So um, there are a couple ways you could do this. My initial plan was either uh, this end, actually it probably was gonna be toward the rear end, um, get a pipe cutter, tubing cutter, and cut the inch and a half out, pop it back together, tack it around and be good. Uh, my current plan is to go down probably on the other end, like I said, and grind this weld off all the way around and pop the yoke out of the back. And then at which point I can shorten it by an inch and a half, cut it, stick the yoke back in it and weld it all the way around. Now, the only thing that I have to do is uh, clock it or mark it so it stays in the same quote-unquote phase as it would um, oh, As it is now, so why don't we get this thing on the ground and I'll show you what I'm working with All right guys, well um, back at it and This is what I have thus far uh, just one second Oh, right the first time, I guess. So, this is what we're working with. I already started down at that end, and it looks like it's going to be somewhat of a, a pain. But, no big deal. We'll, uh, we're pretty persistent here, and uh, I want to get this done as cheaply uh, as possible without any special tools. So, what I've done was put the slip yoke, which is this end here, into the transmission and then measured from this cap to the um, yoke that's on the rear end, center line, center to cap, center to cap, and I've come up with roughly 51 and a half inches. Um, now there will be some slideability down at this end for uh, rear end uh, up and down movement and such, so it doesn't have to be uh, 100% precise, uh, at least not for what I'm doing, but um, obviously I want to get it as close as I can. So what I'm going to do is take my uh, flap disc. I got a couple extra beat ones over there that are probably worse off than the one that's on there, but I'm going to attack, continue to attack the 
end down here and grind and grind and grind and see what I can come up with. Uh, every once in a while, I'll tap it with the old uh, mini sledge and see if I can get it to pop off. Um, so let's keep at her. All right, so we've been working on this thing for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. I've gone around the entire thing and I'm starting to see uh, a little bit of a, a crease or a break, but before I get too far carried away, I want to try to find the pen in my pocket here and just make a reference from here. Oops, fingers are in the shot. Here. All the way down here. I mean, this isn't this isn't anything pretty, folks. I never claim to be an expert, but this is what we're gonna do. So that is the line that I need to index when I put the thing together. So with that being said, I'm gonna put the cap back on here and bludgeon this thing a little bit and see if I can get it to come off. So this is a one-handed McGillicuddy here. So. Oh, right on. So, as you can clearly see here, we have our yoke end that will bolt into the drive shaft with the U bolt or the uh, rear end with the U bolts here, and uh, you know basically just the tube. So what I have to do is take this, measure um, an inch and a half, make a line, and then cut that as straight as I can. So I'm going to line this back up and see what I can come up with here. Okay guys, so I made some more marks marks on here, and um, I'm going to get ready or come up with a way to cut this as straight as I can, and set it up to weld. So stick with me here for a second, and we'll show you how to do that. Moving right along guys, I was able to pr procure a large tubing cutter uh, from work. Uh, it goes from two inches to four inches. I made my mark of what I need to cut. I'm a little on the proud side of that mark just in case I need to you know make some last second adjustments. So I'm going to tighten this down and just like a break line tubing cutter just tighten it as I go and hopefully yields a nice clean cut. So I'm going to get back on with this and I will show you guys what it looks like once it's all through. Just a second. All right guys, I'm almost through. Um, this thing's actually working out pretty decent. You can see the line in there. I'm just gonna keep going little by little until that end cap just pops off. And then we should be good. So let me finish doing this. My grip strength isn't what it used to be. So this is a little challenging and I don't have a large enough vise to put this in. So stand by. Well, there we go, guys. I got this end cut off here. That went there, popped that off. This thing works incredible. And then all I'm gonna do is work at slipping that in making sure my joints are phased properly. I'll tack that in, I'll actually throw it underneath the truck and then wiggle it kind of back and forth and I might grab um, a dial indicator and indicate it and check uh, run out. And once I feel like I, I have it good as far as run out, I'll, what I'll do is I'll jack the back of the truck up. I'll uh, put the mag on the bottom of the the uh, bed and I'll put the uh, indicator 
on the drive shaft and then I'll free wheel the back wheels and check for run out and I can make adjustments on this, you know, left, right, up, down, try to split the difference with the, um, you know, with it being true. Um, so that's what I'm going to do with that. Uh, I'll probably tack it on, you know, half, halfway so I can still get uh, articulation out of it if I need to, to zero it out. But I'm going to stab this in real quick and just make sure I'm going to be good with my measurements. So stand by a second. That's what we're going to do. Okay, so my magic number was 51 and a half for this. And all I did was I took a file, filed off the inside burr from the, uh, the pipe cutter, tubing cutter. And then I slipped that in a little bit. Had to tap it down in there a little bit with... Uh, with the old sledge to kind of get it seated but uh, I just kind of want to get a rough idea of where I'm at here bear with me here so I'm going to try to center that on that cap which it is so I said 51 and a half that's roughly where it's at and I am pretty near 51 and a half so that's all I'm going to do with that um, with uh, regards to shortening it. I'm going to clean this up a little bit more to uh, you know, make sure that I get some good adhesion as far as penetrating and uh, with the weld. And then I'm going to, like I said earlier, grab a dial indicator and just kind of indicate it, make sure that there is an excessive run out in it. Uh, and I said, like I said, I can make an adjustment back there based on uh, uh, rotation from the rear axle through the drive shaft. I can kind of indicate it crudely. So that's that, that's pretty neat. That turned out a little bit better than I expected. This drive shaft's probably gonna shit the bed, anyways, uh, being it's the the four cylinder drive shaft. And I've, I've heard that these kind of pretzel uh, fairly easily. But uh, nonetheless, we will give it a go. I guess as long as I don't drive, it'll probably be fine. So let me take what we have here, and I'm going to put it in the truck, and we're going to indicate it. Uh, but that might be for another day, so I'll pick it up once I get all the stuff that I need in order to do that for you guys. But right now... It's looking great. Drive shaft is cut down. Uh, this thing worked great um, for sure. I would probably keep that around for uh, for other jobs. This is looks pretty old actually. It says two inch to four inch tubing, number forty rigid. That's pretty awesome. So that's where we're at. I'm probably gonna call it. Uh, wife and kid are on their way home. And I got her that little John Deere job out there that we're going to blast around on. So, just wanted to get this done and see where I stood once that tubing was cut. But it's looking great, so stick with it and stick with me. And we will continue the journey of the S10.